Welcome to another episode of the Seduction Show. I'm your host, Hans Komein, and today I speak with an old friend of mine we met over a decade ago in Oslo, Norway. And uh, his name is Torkel. He goes by the name of TJ now. He's living in Las Vegas. And we talk about his story, his work, and also about his marriage. Um, TJ got married to a good friend of mine, Naya, a couple of years ago. And we talk about the marriage. We talk about the fact that they are polyamorous and how they communicate uh, their needs, their desires and with each other inside that marriage. I enjoyed it very much. I hope you do the same. Now the street seems empty, nothing calls me back. And I wonder when and where did I lose this track. All these gates I Hello TJ, how are you doing, sir? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> very well, very well. Um yeah, I used to know you know you as Torkel what you told me. People are not gonna find anything. This is yeah. your uh, your American yes. name now or uh basically i mean I, I lived in the u.s when i was 18 and someone nicknamed me tj because torkel is pretty much impossible to say for right. the, the english uh, tongue and torkel just sounded too much like snorkel so i got, <laughs> I got renamed and uh, now that i live in the u.s it's it's what everyone calls me and after i went international with my work i just kind of switched to uh, to that name right i remember yeah you had you had it i, I remember there was tj before also but I also mm. remember we, we called you Torko all this time. Yeah. This was back when, when, well, when I first met you, I think we met, I, I'm for sure we met in Oslo, but I don't know if that was the first time we met in I, Norway. I think that was the first time I met you because I had recently met Zan before that. And then you uh -huh. guys came to do a workshop in Oslo and, and that's, that's right. where I met. And you were back then, what, what, whew, this is, must be 2009 or something. Yeah, something like that. And you were then, if I remember well, correct me, um, you, were, uh, you were a dating coach in Norway, correct? Yeah. So I, I've always, I, I launched my dating uh, coaching company in, in after, uh, you know, working with people that we know for about a year before that. Mm. And, um, but I always focused, I wasn't really the, the pickup guy. I was more focused on building social circles and, and building the kind of lifestyle where mm. you meet people through your life rather than just, you know, running out to the bars. And, but you, your focus was mainly in, in Norway or Scandinavia, right? Yeah. My, uh, I, I worked internationally with some of our friends and colleagues and then, uh, but in Norway I ran my own business. And so for, for years, my, uh, my, my personal clientele were all, were all Norwegians who wanted to improve their social life or, or right. their dating life. And there was a good market there, no? It was a pretty good market. I mean, Norway is a very small country, but I, um, I managed to very early on get a lot of attention. I had a blog that I'd been running for a couple of years mm -hmm. and it was pretty popular. And then Norway's uh, largest online newspaper had me come in and for six months i did a weekly article that was on the front page uh, every friday oh, wow. so i got a lot of traffic because of that i was on a, a, our biggest radio channel too for about five weeks or six weeks that summer so i, I got off to a really good start of becoming mm. um, the mainstream public face of dating and relationship coaching right Be, and then you, you you went international but before we we do that i, I, w I would like to ask you this i had always also and with arja marata before we had always uh, clients from, from Norway. So there was a, mm -hmm. a, a big need. And when I went there also, I saw a very particular scene where it was very hard, where, where men and women, it was, how would I say? Being social is not something very Norwegian mm -hmm. in the sense that they, they, they would go out, but they wouldn't really like be social, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, until they get really drunk and then they would hook up. That was my experience of it. Mm -hmm. Um, yep, that's that's pretty right. I mean, there are exceptions, of course, but generally speaking, the Scandinavian countries, people are are very guarded and closed off. They don't really mm. talk to strangers. They spend their time with their friends, and then they go out. And as you say, with enough alcohol involved, that's when people start to interact, and that's when things happen. And there's not really a, a dating culture in Norway. It's not like you meet someone and then you ask them out for a date, and you go out for drinks and then for dinner and all that. It's, you know, you go to a party or you meet someone out in the town, 
you go home and you hook up that night. And then maybe if you still like them the next morning, you'll take them out for dinner later that week. Wow. So it's kind of a, a reverse situation of what, what many cultures have. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. I th that was striking to me or interesting and not, not so different from Belgium. I mean, I guess the more North you go in Europe or in the Western mm -hmm. world, the more you see that. Very yeah. interesting. And, uh, like we talked a couple of times, but mostly online. What happened after Norway? How did you, cause now you're in Las Vegas, right? You're in, in the States. Yeah. So I, um, I mean, more and more as the years went by, I started doing more work in, in other fields as well, both in the corporate world and so on. Mm. And uh, also, you know, I traveled more and I did more where at workshops where I, I came in to teach at, at other people's workshops. Mm. And I started building, you know, more of a, an international following as well. So I slowly started creating more content in English rather than Norwegian. Mm. And I've always been, uh, I've always been a fan of, of Vegas. I've been coming here since... 2010 to, yes. uh, to teach at uh, Johnny's workshop right? and really enjoyed it here. And I was starting to have a big group of friends and people that I loved in this town. So in 2016, I decided that I was going to come to Vegas and just stick around for six months. I, mm. I had a visa that let me hang out for six months. And so I, I saved up money from Norway and I, I moved my business mostly online. And then I came here and just uh, kind of moved in. And I was already having a, a casual, you know, non-committed relationship with, uh, with Naya, who's now my wife, of course, who you know. Mm -hmm. And in the time that I was here in 2016, it just kind of, it just, that relationship just kept growing and growing and getting better and nice. more, more, more important to me. So by the end of, uh, end of that stay, I just realized that Vegas is where I need to be. Wow. Great. So I had to go home because my visa was expiring. So, so I did that and I spent the next six months at home taking care of some stuff, uh, doing a lot of work, setting up some money, so on and so forth. And then uh, January, 2017, I, I moved here and I, I haven't looked back since I've only gone to visit. Wow. So now I work with clients. Uh, I mean, I had already been doing it at that point, but I work with clients from all around the world. I still have a good portion of, of Norwegian clients, but huh. I have clients from everywhere. I have uh, one from Pakistan and Australia and, you know, the U S and the Caribbean, and you name it. I think, no, I'm sure. I stopped by Johnny Casa Soporno in mm -hmm. 2016. We we saw each other there, no? Yes. Yeah, I, uh, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. So and you, so you went home then, and then you came back in 2017. Yep. And I okay. uh, haven't haven't left since. I married wow. Naya, and um, we uh, we share a beautiful house together with a couple of cats, and uh, yes. yeah, it's pretty good. I is a fantastic woman and Vegas is a fantastic city. And, you know, I always recommend it to people too. I, I was surprised like in 2010, I lived there a while and mm. uh, it's, a, I was surprised cause you, you, I didn't expect it to be such a, a great city, but off, off the strip, I really enjoy the accessibility, the weather, right. the, the prices, you know, the art scene is great. It's for oh, me. Wonderful. Yeah. One of my favorite cities in the, in the States for sure. You know? Yeah. It's, it's funny because every time I meet someone who hasn't really spent a lot of time here and they, they learn that I live in Vegas, they all go, how can you live in that place? Mm. And it's always because, you know, they've come to visit for like three days. They right. stayed on the strip. They party their ass off. They spent all their money. They <laughs> go home. They're just tired and miserable and all of that. Yeah. But as you say, outside of the strip, there's so much to Vegas or it has so much to offer. As you say, the art scene is amazing. The, the private, you know, party and socializing scene is great. There's so many workshops and, you know, there, there's really nothing you can't do in the city. Right. And it's all in a fairly small area. It's easy to navigate. There's hardly any traffic. And of course, the temperature is not something to complain about either. Right. And there's good cycling. I went mountain biking yeah, and I I've went road, road biking. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, uh, so you've been there now three years. How, how have you seen your work evolve say over the years coming from Norway and up to what you're doing right now? Well, I've moved basically all my work online. Uh, mm -hmm. Back home, my, my main source of, of clients and income was doing workshops. Mm -hmm. I do the typical three-day workshops, but I had week-long workshops. I had three week-long workshops. And, um, and of course, I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching too, but, but the majority of what I was doing was my, my workshops and my courses and my seminars. And when I moved here, you know, I had this long list of, of clients in Norway. And so I just kind of moved online and started doing personal coaching online. 
Then I started shooting, you know, courses. And so I have several courses out now that are kind of slowly replacing my workshops of me um, taking the uh -huh. topics that I teach on those and putting them out there instead. And it's, it's really interesting because I love the one-on-one -on -one connection with clients. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. It's fun to teach a workshop. It's great to have a room of people and, you know, do mm -hmm. all that stuff. But what I'm really passionate about is, is getting in deep with someone. And so now I basically only work with clients that are long-term clients. I do four month programs at the very right. least. And I get to go deep in with them and see their life and see the, how they evolve and, and watch them get to the places that they want to get, you know, rather than having people come in for a weekend and then leaving and then right. I might hear from them or I might, might not. And so, is this also mainly online or, or do, do people come in? Uh, I do, I do offer, you know, in-person training, but, uh, mm -hmm. but it's, it's rare that I do that these days. And those also, also usually are personal one-on-one -on -one intensive workshops. Mm -hmm. So that would be some, you know, last time I went to San Francisco because there was a client there who really wanted to do a workshop with me. So I flew out to San Francisco and, and he put me up and then we did the whole workshop that weekend. And it's fun. And I, I like doing that too. And I, of course, anytime someone wants me to come speak or do a seminar, I'm happy to do that. I, I love that stuff. But I'd say probably 85% of what I do is all online and it gets me, you know, I can, I can meet the client where they're at. So when right. I'm working with my client in Pakistan, I can be sitting in my office and he can be at home and we can go deep in, into his life there in ways that, that I wouldn't be able to do over just a weekend of right. one of us flying out to see the other. Yeah. And what, what would you say is your, uh, your strength? What do you feel like confident about? Like you say, okay, that kind of guy in that situation, or when this is the issue, when this is the question, there I feel that's, that's my forte, that's my strength. That's a tricky one because there, there are so many people that I love working with. But if I have to pick one, I'd say, you know, the, the driven people, the mm -hmm. guys who want something out of life. They have a hunger for life. They have the ambitions. And, and maybe they've also done well in, in some areas of life, but at the very least they have that, that fire of, I want to do more than just you know, sit around and watch TV. Mm -hmm. Anyone with that drive in them, I, I can do wonders with, because usually when, when you work with people like that, there are these almost invisible sticking points that are holding them back. And once you can pinpoint what those are and pull them out, mm -hmm. It's just like a floodgate that opens and suddenly they right. start you know, turbo boosting themselves forward towards what mm -hmm. they want. And that's always fun when you can watch that process happen. So yeah, definitely the, the guys who have that, that fire of, I want more, I want something big, I want something exciting, or, or I just want something wonderful for myself and I'm willing to make the effort to get mm -hmm. it. And you said that the, 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 the core of what you present or how you work is more around like social circles? Uh, well, the core of it is really about the client themselves. So mm -hmm. I, uh, my, my company in Norway was called Genuine Connections. Yes. And the reason I chose that name is because to me, it's always been about having the, the genuine, the authentic connections and not just about, you know, finding someone. Mm -hmm. And so what I focus on is helping the clients get to the point where they're truly comfortable with themselves and what they want, even if, you know, it's not perfect and they're not happy with it and they're still working towards something, but they go, okay, so this is me. This is who I am and this is who I'm going to present to the world and then help them do that to everyone around them. Mm. And when you do that, when you go out and you're unashamedly, unapologetically yourself, you show the world who you are, including the things that you are working on. I'm trying to get better at this. You show the world around you you're going to attract the kind of people who should be in your life, the yes. kind of people that you're truly compatible with. And that's not just about, you know, meeting a girl, at least not to me. That's about having people surround you that you can be truly yourself with people who love you for you. Mm -hmm. Some of those are going to be men. Some of them are going to be women that you have no interest or no, you know, sexual or romantic interest in. And some of them are going to be women that you have a great sexual or, or romantic connection with. Mm -hmm. So I'm not about the, uh, you know, targeted, let's go out and do the specific thing so that we can attract this and that person. I'm more mm -hmm. about becoming your genuine self so that everyone you meet get to see that those mm -hmm. who aren't a good match for you, they can move on and find someone else to spend their time with and leave space for you to bring in someone who will truly be of value and, and contribute to the kind of life that you want to have. Mm. And, and how do you, how do you help a guy or how do you, help a guy figure out what his genuine self is? 
So it's, it's a good question because my philosophy is kind of, it's kind of, what do you call it? Schizophrenic on this thing. On the mm -hmm. one hand, I'm not a fan of labels. I don't like it when people say, oh, I am this and that. And they give them like a, a five, 10 bullet point list of this is who mm -hmm. I am because they lock themselves into an idea and, and you know, right. they use a word, then whatever definition of that word is, then they have to act within that. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, encourage my clients to get rid of as many labels as they want, as they can, and simply be, simply focus on what is right for me to do right now. What do mm -hmm. I want to do right now? On the other hand, you know, you can't really find yourself or, or, you know, be your genuine self without having an idea of just what that is. So a lot of my work is really about not helping people find their labels or achieve their labels, but helping them remove the things that are holding them back from doing mm -hmm what they truly want to do. Right. So just earlier today, for example, on a coaching call, I was talking to a client who he, he wants to now for the first time in his life is in his mid thirties. He wants to have, you know, find a real relationship, something committed, something long-term. He's never had that before, mm. but he's dated a lot of women casually. And he has this, this idea that unless he does the logistical parts of everything correctly, then, you know, he's not going to get, whatever good relationship he's looking for. Mm. So to him, it's hard for him to be genuine because he's always thinking about what does she want? How can right. I get her to say yes to my thing? What is the most, the smartest, most strategic thing from the books or whatever to do? Mm. And that's his sticking point is he thinks he needs crutches. He thinks he needs that in order to find someone that he's a genuine match with. But right. in reality, once we remove those, that kind of thinking, Right. And he truly understands that, well, if I meet a girl and I tell her exactly what's on my mind, when I want her to, to do something with her, I give her that invitation. I say, this is what I want to do. Do you want to come along? When he starts doing that, he might not attract this girl he's dating, but he will attract a girl who's right for him. Someone right. who wants to come along for those things, who wants to have those conversations that he wants to have and so mm -hmm. on. Now, in your years of experience, what do you see are like the main things that are holding man back and that are blind spots that they don't see it uh well what i just mentioned is definitely one of them the idea that men has to do something right or the right thing to get uh -huh. the girl or a girl uh rather than realizing that if they focus on themselves and do what's right for them mm -hmm. which includes you know when they're talking to a girl not to try to get her to like him but to figure out if he really likes her for something mm -hmm. more than just her appearance that's a huge one most men most men talk to women to get the woman to like him and then mm -hmm. don't put, you know, don't give a second thought to what they truly want and what they right. truly are interested in. And also simply the idea that it seems that a lot of people have that they have to be some specific thing. Mm -hmm. You know, for some people it's, I got to, you know, have a six pack or I got to be taller. Or I got to have more money or I got to have this thing. And they believe that, these things are important to women, even if they're not important to them. Mm. So once one guy I was talking to a little while ago, he thought that unless he got, cause he was un unemployed, he'd been laid off like a year earlier. And he was convinced that no woman would want him if he didn't have a job. Mm -hmm. And then when I asked him, well, how important is it for him that someone has a job for him to love and appreciate them? He couldn't care less. Mm -hmm. So I had to ask, you know, well, why do you want to be with a woman who has so, such different values than you? Why right. do you want to be with someone where that is so important that they can't see past it if you mm -hmm. don't care about it? Mm -hmm. And so these ideas that guys have that women want something different, the moment they realize that the women who are right for them mm -hmm. are the women who are looking for what they have. It's the women who share their values, share their ideas, share their wants and ambitions. Maybe not specifically, they might not want specifically specifically the right the same thing but they both value the same you know principles or ethics or, or whatever once they see that a lot of a lot of guys can take the pressure off and be much more efficient in finding someone who's truly a good match for right them. it seems so often like i talk with 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 many coaches that the 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 issue of women really is a a stage where a lack of self-knowledge, self-love, self-confidence becomes very apparent. And, and so we think it's about women and it always comes back to there are things about us that we could change, you know, like you just mm -hmm. described just a, 
a way of looking at things, you know, or yeah. a way of showing your values are not aligned, you know? And, yeah. uh, and I'm, I'm the first to say, you know, if there's something that you're unhappy with about yourself because you don't like it, because it's something that you value that you don't have enough about enough mm -hmm. of, go work on it. If honesty is important to you, it's some, it's a, it's a principle, it's a value that you hold strongly and you're not being honest, you're lying to people around you, then definitely work on that. Cause you need to get better at that to be the kind of person that, that you want to be, to be in integrity right. with yourself. But to work on things because you think that's what other people want from you. Mm -hmm. That is where, people, where guys get tripped up. They work on things for the girls, right. not realizing that you know, if they get the six pack and they get this fancy job that they don't actually care about, they're gonna attract women who have different values than them. They're gonna attract women they're just not a good match with. Right, great, interesting, good stuff, Turkel. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a private question also. You don't have to answer it. Just let me know, you know. Fire away. But uh, you, you married Naya, uh, huh? a, a good friend also. A fantastic, beautiful, one of the most radiant women I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. really a, a dynamo, you know. She gives energy. It's incredible. How has, how has married life been in the, these three years? Three years? Oh, it's been, it's been wonderful. So it's... it's it's funny because I am not the relationship kind of guy. That's, that's a sentence I've been saying for 15, 20 years. I am not a relationship kind of guy. And for a long time, all I would do is have casual relationships with women. And I would mm -hmm. date you know, multiple women at once usually, but it was all open and honest. You know, I'm not here to be your boyfriend. I'm just this and you can come hang out with me. And these women were my friends and they were my lovers and we were close. And even when you know, the, the lover part ended, we would usually still stay friends. And I loved that life and I couldn't see myself doing anything else. And then as my relationship with Naya just grew and grew and I realized that, you know, that idea that I had myself, that was that label, the thing that I keep telling mm. my clients not to, I've been doing that to myself. Mm. And so when I, I finally gave into it and I realized, you know, I, I want something now that I don't think I've ever wanted before. Mm -hmm. uh, lucky for me, she wanted the same thing. So, so it's been great. We, we're a polyamorous couple. So it's not like I've, I've taken myself completely off the market, nor has she. So, you know, we still get to have excitement and we still get to go on dates and we still get to meet new people and, and make new connections and be out there. But, you know, we get to come home and, and be with each other, which is our base and which is you know, where I want to be. So, yeah, it's wonderful. Is, it, is, it, is that a... Is the... the polyamorous again what only answer whatever you feel uh, oh i'm an open book you can ask me anything okay. i'm not shy <laughs> you make video <laughs> <laughs> right. is this is the is the polyamory is it is it something that you agreed upon in the beginning and it it, it runs smoothly or is it something that's constantly how would i no. say this gives you the opportunity to, to, to manage and, and get to know each other better and talk a lot? Um, uh, it, there, was, there was never a, a conversation about anything else. Uh, it, was, it was obvious for us. I have defined myself as, as polyamorous or poly for as long as I've known about the term and, and Naya did as well. In fact, when our relationship started to grow, she already had another boyfriend and she was also in a poly polyamorous relationship with him. Mm -hmm. So it was never a question of anything else. When we, you know, went from just being lovers to being, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, she was already in a relationship. I had playmates and it wasn't like any of that was going to change. And then when her relationship ended and all that, it was never a talk of should we not be open? Cause we are both polyamorous people as far as we can tell by nature. Right. Um, monogamy just doesn't work for us. And I am not on either side of the debate of what people should do or what's right or whatever. As long as people do what's right for them. And, one of the reasons that Naya and I worked out so well, uh, Naya and I are very different people. You, you know us both. I'm much more relaxed and laid back. And you know how I'm talking now is how usually how I talk. While mm. my wife is high energy and talks fast <laughs> and is eager and you know all of that. And so singing of most of the dancing, time. Singing most of the time. Right. Singing <laughs> all the time. Dancing and bopping around. And so a lot of our friends were fascinated in the beginning. They're like. I, I love both of you and, and this is great, but why, how, how are you two together? How are you two, how do you two work out? And I used to say that, well, it's great. Cause it's kind of like dating myself. And she wasn't talking about my, my 
energy or my outwards uh, behavior. She was talking about my wants, my desires, my values, what was important right. to me, what I wanted out of life and relationships. And she wanted the exact same thing. Mm. So it's been very easy for us um, to just keep that going. And also we're, you know, we're very focused on communication. She's a great communicator and, you know, communication is my living. Mm -hmm. So we, um, we, and you know, you asked about maintaining and we definitely do that. We have some, what we call all, uh, the state of the union. So every few months we will sit down and we'll go through great. our boundaries, our wants and our desires and our experiences in the last few, you know, however long it's been since last time. And, and we'll go in deep and we'll talk about this and we'll redefine and shift things that needs to be shifted. And so far also, if any issues have come up in our relationship, whether it was, you know, some external lover or, or you know, just something between the two of us, it usually doesn't take more than half a day until we're sitting down and, and mm. talking through it. I got, I got two questions for you. One is like, what is, what is to you guys polyamory? And then I would like to ask you also about uh, communication. Because uh, you say it's important, but like, what kind of, what are the parameters of that? But uh, t tell us a little bit, what, what do you guys see as polyamorous? Sure. So, so that's also kind of funny because uh, technically speaking, at least so far in our relationship, uh, Naya has been polyamorous and I've been open. Now, now the difference is a polyamorous person is someone who uh, generally feels love for multiple people where, you know, they have... You know, like Naya, I'm her primary partner, but she might also take on a boyfriend or a girlfriend, someone that she loves and who becomes a, a partner, who becomes that, gets that title. Mm -hmm. I've never had multiple titled partners. Uh, it's not something I've been looking for. I'm not saying it can't happen. To me, Naya is my primary and, and my wife and, and all of that. And then other women tend to be my lovers. There's, you know, obviously there's a, an emotional connection. I, I, appreciate them and I, I want to spend time with them. That's why I have them in my life. But I'm not necessarily looking to make it a relationship. I'm not trying to have multiple girlfriends. It's not a goal and it's never been something that I've had. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have, you know, different ways of going about it. And I rarely gets involved with someone that she doesn't see, but see a potential for a long-term partner with, while I will get involved with someone who is fun and cute and, and who I enjoy, but I might not you know, see or, or ever get a long-term committed relationship with them. So to me, what's important is um, in any relationship, including, including monogamous relationships, the important thing is that the people in that relationship talk about what the relationship is. Yes. Way too many people, even in, especially in a monogamous relationship, they get together, oh, we're boyfriend, girlfriend, we're not going to, you know, sleep with anyone else. Cool. And then they kind of just think they have it all figured out. They know what it right. is. But it's so different. So, you know, I've, I've had coaching sessions with couples who were struggling and having issues. And one of, the, one of the first things I always do is I tell them, you know what, I'm going to ask you guys a question. And then I'll point to one of them and say, you answer first. Point to the other one and say, you don't get to say anything. Don't look at the mm -hmm. other person. Don't comment. Don't do anything. Just look at me. And when it's your turn, you don't answer what that person said. You, you give your answer. And then I ask them, what is cheating? Uh -huh. And nine times out of 10, the answers are completely different. Right. I've had people cry uh, during this conversation because <laughs> they realized that they had cheated on their partner. They just didn't know. They didn't know that that was cheating for the other person. <laughs> so this is what, and, and you know, it's a good segue to communication. This is what I- <laughs> I'm see. just imagining that situation. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> when they're talking oh, to first, you. Oh yeah. yeah. First time it happened, I had the, I, I asked a woman to talk, speak first and she started talking and she went on, you know, emotional cheating was a right. big thing for her. And I think it was, you know, if, if we're having problems, if we're having difficulties, you know, talk to me about it. Don't go talk to someone else. I don't want anyone else to know more than I do about what's right. going on in our relationship. And this guy, especially not a woman. And this guy had a female friend that he'd been close with to for years who was basically his therapist. He would go there and talk about everything. Mm -hmm. And so, and he just like, he was tearing up and I saw I was about to cry because he realized how much he had been cheating on his wife or his mm -hmm. girlfriend. So it definitely does happen. So, you know, the, the, what is polyamory for us is we have our, our list of needs, our list of bound. So I, I categorize boundaries in three steps. It's boundaries, which are the absolutes cannot be broken mm -hmm. needs, which must be upheld, but can be broken if we agree on it. Naya can come to me and say, Hey, I know you have this need. Can we, you know, dissolve it for this weekend? Can we ignore it for now? And I can say, mm -hmm. yes, 
and then their wants, the things that we would like, but it's not important. Mm. And so we talk about this, and that's what defines our polyamory. It's not right. the title we use, it's not anything else. I know, for example, that I'm not allowed to get involved with some of any of Naya's friends. For mm. me to start a sexual romantic relationship with one of her friends would be crossing her boundary. Right. And so I wouldn't do that. Now, there are some women that I can be cuddly and making out with and stuff like that, but that's where it stops. And so I know all of these things, not because she has said, don't hook up with my friends, but because mm -hmm. we've talked in detail about boundaries and needs right. and wants for both of us. It's, and that's important in any, con any relationship. Right. Yeah, it's, it's like when I speak about open relationships to people, I, I usually say the openness is that it, we're, we're open for discussion, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the, the talking about it, it seems also, even when you, you call it polyamory, the communication is the essence because if the tragedy of, say, traditional relationships, the monogamous, uh, cohabitant, romantic relationship, the relationship form in our society, is, mm. the tragedy is not so much that form, because that could be beautiful, but mm. to, it seems to me that the tragedy is everything is presupposed and everything is yeah. assumed and not talked about and not deliberate. And so the, the, <laughs> that's a highway to, to cheating and betrayal and feeling, mm. you know, and breaking up. And, uh, and so the tragedy really is that, that we're not, not communicating. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, I, I, and this is, you know, this has been the thing that I've been working on since I, well, before I started coaching, I've been talking about this. Of course, I've, I've gotten better at it over the years, but there are, there are so many people who are missing out on so many things. Mm. You know, they, they're in a relationship and they're just limited, not because of boundaries, but because they don't know where the boundaries are. Yes. And a lot of people don't understand that. They think that, you know, if I, if I sit down with my partner and I list, you know, my boundaries, these are the things that you can't do and I can't do. And then I'm, I'm limiting or I'm, you know, it's, it's a bad conversation. It's a serious conversation. It's a heavy conversation. Right. But, right. you know, it can be if you approach it that way. But if you approach it with a smile and with a yes. curious and exploratory tone, there's so many things that could open up for you. Well, in a way, it's, it's in that moment of talking about it that's relating that mm -hmm. is the relationship, you know, Absolutely. that's where you, where you grow your loyalty, where you start understanding, where you can honor the other, where you can grow closer. That, yeah. it's, that conversation is not a necessary evil, you know, it's the essential gateway to the growth of that relationship. Yeah, no doubt. And it's, it's amazing too. It's, I've been teaching this, uh, uh, the state of the union conversation and, and expectation. I love that. And sitting state down and, and yeah. Uh, and, um, and we also, uh, I'll, throw this in there we also have something we call rules of engagement mm -hmm. so when we're going to an event or a party or, or whatever uh we usually check in with ourselves each other and go hey what are the rules of engagement tonight which is you know mm -hmm. is there anything in other than the, the most the thing that we always do is there anything in, other than that that's on the table for what we you know what what we have the opportunities to do say and you know we we like to go to music festivals and stuff like that so we go there we'll do rules of engagement and quite often it's, you know what, I'm okay with you doing this thing that I'm usually not okay with, go play. And then it, it opens up the space. And when it does, then that's perfectly fine because that's what we always have. So right. just having these conversations, engaging with your partner on these things can open up so many opportunities. Mm. I had a, a client of mine, well, a former client of mine who reached out because he was now in a monogamous relationship. And he was curious about how to do this conversation uh, with a monogamous partner. And so we talked about it. And I basically told him the same stuff that I've been telling you guys. And he called me up. Clients never call me up. Like they, they will email me and ask, but he just called me up. So I was surprised. I figured something might be wrong. So I answered. And he's like, dude, I just had that conversation with a girl and I had no idea that she liked threesomes. Mm -hmm. And they have been together for about a year. And then he sat down to talk about boundaries and needs and wants. And it turned out that one of her wants was for them to meet women together. Mm -hmm. And so it's just amazing what can happen when you just right. talk to your partner. <laughs> <laughs> so simple, yet so complex. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I had a great question. Oh, here it, go. here it is. What makes Naya to you mm -hmm. such a great woman? <laughs> well, it's all the things that you mentioned, of course, all, you know, her energy and, and her zest for life and her positivity. Uh, but I keep coming back to something that always makes her kind of laugh because she thinks it's a silly thing to say but that's because she has it so much naya is one of the most capable people that i've ever met mm. 
And to her, it's not a big deal. When first time I told her, she was like, well, what do you mean I'm capable? And I said, you can do stuff. Like if you put your mind to something, even if you have no idea how to do it, you'll figure it out and you'll, yes. you'll work through it. You'll make it happen. You'll learn. She's smart. She's super smart. But, but she has that drive of just, no, I, I'll, I'll figure this out. I'll make it happen. I'll, I'll create it. Right. And so many people are not capable. Like they are capable at the things they've already learned how to do. Mm. But to me, it's, it's just amazing. And, you know, it sounds like a pra pragmatic thing, but it's not just things like she, she bought a couch that was yellow. She got it. It was the slightly wrong color of yellow. So she figured out how to dye a full couch. <laughs> and I'm like, who does that? That's ridiculous and amazing at the same time. And it's just stuff like that. that just makes me, you know, it, I'm fascinated. I'm, I admire. I'm so impressed by her yes. all the time. And also I, I can relax. I don't have to, you know, father anything. I don't have to make, yes. myself, I don't have to, I know that if she wants my help with something, she'll let me know. And if not, it's because she's mm -hmm. got it. I don't have to worry if we're out traveling and I'm a control freak when I travel, I like having things set up, but she's on top of things. And so I've gotten to the point now where I'll be walking through an airport and I don't even know which airport I'm at because she's in charge and I'm just being lazy. And I've never had that much. So that to me is one of the qualities that just keeps me, you know, re-infatuated with her. Whenever, every now and then she'll do something. I go, who the hell does that? That's amazing. <laughs> That's really cool. So it's one of the things. And of course, as you said, you know, she's smart. She's gorgeous. She's so funny. She's so active. And, and she's the first girl in my life that I've had to keep up with. Mm -hmm. I've always been the one, like I am an introvert by, by nature, but I love people. And my, my energy is up and I, my batteries are charged. I love going out and meeting people and socializing and in all the, the relationships that i've had that's been more than you know a couple of nights together it's usually been me who had the party going on or had this thing mm. and who had dragged the, the girls along and for the first time in my life i'm just trying to keep up with this girl i'm just trying to be <laughs> a part of all the things that she does or at least some of them and and that also is uh it's just wonderful for me so great yeah, yeah you got a great thing you know, I, yeah. I, when I heard about it, I instantly thought it was a great, that you were, would be a great couple. So there That's you awesome. go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. What do you have? What is on your horizon now, uh, TJ? What are you thinking about? What are you planning? What do you look forward to with great anticipation in the near future? Well, I mean, right now the world's kind of weird. Uh, you know, we have the, the pandemic going on and the U.S. is basically locked down. Uh, Vegas is quiet and Vegas is never quiet. So right now I'm, I'm kind of just biding my time and looking at what I'm, um, you know, I'm looking at work more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just released uh, one more uh, online course this week. And I'm, I'm trying to think in new directions and do stuff that I haven't done before. Mm. So some ideas that I have are, I, you know, virtual retreats. You know, I know you uh, in the Samarata have the have had the uh, you know coming to to Bucharest and, and be gathered as a group and all right. of that. Now we can't really do that, at least not here. Right. But I'm I'm looking to you know what technology do we have in place that can bring people together and can keep people going even if they're locked in their house if they mm -hmm. they live somewhere where it's that bad. So right now I'm I'm really excited about work. Work is interesting because a lot of my clients are kind of taking a break and taking it slow now because they're sitting at home mostly. I right. uh, just finished my newest online course, which took up you know, days and weeks of my time. And so now my schedule is wide open and I have a, basically a list of ideas. What is, that the, was, so what is the online course? Like how do you present it? What is it titled? What is it about? Who is it for? So, so I have several that, that are pretty popular. I, so uh, a client of mine who came to a workshop that I did with Johnny Soporno a couple of years ago, made his living off of courses and he was making more money than I was. And he was pushing me for like a year to get into it and, and do more of it. And he's, his courses are on Udemy. I don't know if you know it, but Udemy.com yes. has, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's, to be honest, it's not the, the greatest platform for instructors because you don't really get to set your own price. You don't get to keep the email list of the people signing up and all of this. But my part, my thing about courses is I, I love making them. I love creating content mm. and I hate marketing. I hate marketing with a passion. Mm -hmm. So the idea of making a course and then spending, you know, the rest of my time trying to sell it, it's just, I couldn't do it. So my client convinced me to go uh, and make some courses on Udemy. And I've put out four courses right now, by now, one of them this week. And they have, they're, I think they're passing 9,000 students around this, this time. 
and uh, rated among the highest ones on nice. Udemy's I mean, the 150,000 courses they have there. So I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, my, I have a free course that's called Social Confidence for Introverts. Social that was Confidence kind of my for Introverts. Social, yeah, Social Confidence for Introverts. And that Udemy. was kind of my test. I just made it as an hour and a half course. I made it to put it out uh, to see how the reception would be. And it was amazing. So I moved on and I made the, um, the Secrets of uh, Confidence and Communication course, mm. which got great reviews and for a long time was the top rated course in that category. And now it's still in the top three. And then uh, in December, I released uh, How to Make Friends and Create Better Social Circles. Mm. And that is currently the highest rated course in, uh, in social skills. Um, what is it? The personal networking on, on Udemy. Nice. And then this week, I launched my latest course, which, which is Authentic Assertiveness. Authentic so it's about, assertiveness. You know, speaking, communicating more assertively and, and being more clear in your communication and dealing with disagreements and conflict and so on. Wow. So would Udemy, Udemy be the place where people find your work or are there other places where they can find you? Uh, yeah, you can find me there at tjgutormson.com. I know that's a tricky name, but I figure they can probably read my name wherever you post this, this video. It's in the um, notes underneath. So. Yeah, tjgutormson.com is my website on there. You'll find my, my blog, of course. There's, the, um, there's links to all the courses with discounts. So the courses are priced between 150 and 199 but with those discounts, you shouldn't pay more than 20 bucks or less. Nice. Um, then there's uh, yeah my articles and stuff like that. I have a couple of free trainings on their video trainings and every now and then I give away free coaching sessions too. So hmm. if you're lucky and you go on there, there's a link that says free coaching. There's a, you know, calendar type booking system. If you click that, if there are free open time slots, then I'm giving free coaching. And right now with the pandemic going on, I've got lots of time. So there's plenty of, plenty of uh, sessions to pick. Wow. That's great. Yeah. We, like we always c connected on a, like I never really knew your work, uh, Tor mm -hmm. uh TJ. Right. <laughs> But I, I always, you know, I connected well with you because you always, you're a very down to earth, grounded man. Like you say, you're an introvert, but then you, you are, you are social at the same time. You know, I don't know I, how I'm you an, described it, but. Uh, I'm an outgoing introvert. An outgoing introvert. Yeah. So but it's yes. funny. I'll, I'll give this little tidbit. Um, people don't, people use the words introvert and extrovert wrong. They use it to describe behavior. But really, uh, if you look at the psychology of it. Uh, introverts are people who, who charge their batteries by having alone time, by being uh, alone or, or with very limited amount of people. I can charge my batteries with Naya and my sister and that's it. Other than uh, that, I need to be alone when I'm tired and I can't go out and socialize seven days in a row without right. getting plenty of time to do that. An extrovert is someone who, when they're tired, they need to be around people they like. They're around other people and they feel mm -hmm. more energized because of it. So it's, you know, by nature, when someone is, is introverted, as children, they tend to withdraw more. And so their behavior changes, not because of their introversion, but just because they don't have a lot of outgoing practice mm. because they're not spending as much time around people as their extroverted friends are. So I'm an outgoing introvert, which means I have the skills and I love being around people, but only when I have the energy. Right. Now, lucky for me, I don't need more than a day to gather my energy and I'm good to go again. But mm. I find that you know, about three days in a row I can socialize and then, then I need some me time to recharge. So yeah, you can definitely, you know, anyone listening who know they're an introvert, who likes, you know, being alone or, or gets tired around too many people, just know that that's just where you get your energy from. It does not have to dictate your behavior. And I know because I was an, a shy and reclusive introvert until I learned this stuff and, and started wow. working on my own, uh, my own communication skills. I might, I might be a very outgoing introvert myself. There you go. Describe that. Very interesting. I believe there's... I believe that a lot of us who have, you know, learned a lot of these things in, in adult age where we studied it and gone deep, I believe a lot of us are outgoing introverts because mm -hmm. I think the reason we felt like we needed it was because we had been introverts, but we, we loved people, but we needed that time to ourselves. Right. And as children, we couldn't combine those two as well. Mm -hmm. So as adults, when we realize that, you know, I, I can actually learn to improve my communication skills and get what I want socially, we did that. Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy we had this call, TJ, because I realize now, like, w the, way, the way I could recommend people to you is because of who you are, you know? Mm. And then it's not so much, like, I, I can see how you would adapt whatever you teach to someone based on their question. And it really is, like, the energy of being around with someone like you 
who has mm. some particular experiences and is very keen to understand and curious and help someone out, you know, that's mm. way more important than uh, than any uh, flag you you walk by, you know, or any right. yeah. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm that's happy high that praise coming from you, Hans. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's uh, I'm, yeah, I'm happy that uh, I got to get this conversation with you and that I, I, I felt that energy again. So yeah. Um, who, yeah, anyone who would like to get in contact with Torco, you could see it underneath. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always ask me if you can't find them. And uh, I'm looking forward that we see each other again in Vegas because uh, it's too. one of the places I'm looking forward to, to, to come even this year, as soon as, uh, as I can get out of Brazil and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm welcome in the States. Yeah, that sounds great. I, I'd love to see you again. Actually, I was thinking about it when you uh, said that we saw each other a few years ago. We saw each other for Halloween here in Vegas. We went to a Halloween party together. Right. Yeah. Right. That's when I, yes, yes, yes. November 2016. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, that was great. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it now. You were Aladdin. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was zombie Aladdin, actually. I was... Um, yeah, and you were a, a Zorro type guy with mask and and I was jacket. I was a rock and roll. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> yeah, that was a good night. My only clothes that I had, so that's why. <laughs> hey, I wish you all the best, Torko. Thank you for Likewise. accepting and uh, being here. And say hello to your wife and to Johnny also. And uh, well, keep uh, Las Vegas ready for me. <laughs> I'll do my best. Talk soon, sir. All right. that's it for today today's episode of the seduction show thank you for listening uh, you can always subscribe share with friends leave a review if you can that will help us uh, with that being said stay legendary my friends Sois parti, darling. precious birds gone for a while a smoke trail no longer traceable